Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you some uh, project which involves a radio transmitter and receiver. This is basically the transmitter and uh, this is the receiver. This is uh, the so-called RF 433 uh, transmitter and receiver. Uh, you can find them very easily. Uh, and it also involves a small OLED screen, a push button, uh, Arduino Nano, and uh, some kind of uh, signal source. Uh, and uh, the signal source is, it, it can be anything uh, which triggers uh, your Arduino. Uh, in my case, in, in the demonstration, it is a potentiometer because I just want to change the voltage levels and uh, read those voltage levels in the analog input of the Arduino. But uh, originally I was thinking to use this uh, microphone board, uh, which consists of a microphone, uh, some operational amplifier, uh, some uh, circuit uh, around it, uh, a potentiometer, which uh, is used to set the trigger level of this uh, circuit, and uh, two uh, LED lights. One is just the on-off light basically and the other is uh, showing you whether the circuit is triggered or not. And then there are like four pins on this circuit. Uh, in the middle you have the plus and the ground and on this side, uh, left side of the board, you have a digital output. So basically uh, it goes from zero to one or from low to high whenever you pass the trigger level, which is set by the potentiometer. And just one comment about this potentiometer is that uh, the screw here has several turns. So don't give up uh, changing the uh, trigger level by just turning it a little bit. Uh, keep turning it uh, several rounds, uh, either clockwise or counterclockwise, uh, because you might just uh, not too brave maybe, and just turn it once. So you never actually went any near uh, the trigger level. So that's the digital output. So you just set the trigger level and if uh, you go over that, then it turns on or off. And then there is an analog level and as I understood, uh, analog pin. And as I understood that should work in the following way. So now as I would talk, as I am talking, uh, there should be um, some voltage on this pin uh, proportional to the level of my sound. So for example, if I would stop talking now, the voltage would uh, drop, uh, not significantly, but uh, within the 0 to 5 volt scale, it should drop uh, noticeably, because uh, the voice level also drops uh, noticeably. But that's not the case. So I was using uh, a sensitive uh, uh, voltmeter, and I was also using oscilloscope and everything. I tried to measure this pin. I also tried to uh, change this potentiometer but the analog output is uh, not really working. So maybe it's a defective board or a bad board or the microphone is wrong, but uh, it was not working uh, as I wanted to. So uh, to emulate that thing that I was expecting from this board, so a significantly or noticeably changing output on the analog pin uh, for a noticeably for a noticeable change in the input of the microphone. So basically, as you would talk or something, uh, this uh, voltage should increase. And as you would stop talking or as the noise would stop in the background, uh, the voltage level should drop. But it doesn't work like that. So this is not good. So instead of that, I'm using a potentiometer to demonstrate uh, my project. So the motivation behind uh, this circuit is the following. So at my workplace, uh, I work with some instruments and uh, they are located in the basement of the building and I'm located uh, on the ground floor in my office. And uh, I start the machine, which uh, does some testing on some certain materials and I leave the machine to run. And usually this machine uh, can run up to several days uh, if I let it run that long. It depends on the test. Uh, but I also have to uh, check it uh, often because uh, if the tested uh, specimen fails, then of course I have to stop the machine, remove the specimen and uh, 
put in a new specimen and start a new test. And uh, of course, I don't really know uh, whether the specimen fails in, let's say, two hours or not, because it's a little bit of a statistical uh, thing. But uh, the thing is that I always have to visit that machine. And usually I visit that machine every hour because I have other things to do and uh, I, I just cannot sit uh, next to the machine, of course. And uh, therefore, for example, if I check the machine at uh, 10 o'clock and it is running, then I leave uh, the room and I would probably check again at 11 o'clock. So roughly every one hour I go down and check the machine. But what could happen is that I check it at 10 and uh, the machine just stops one minute uh, after 10 o'clock. And if I check it uh, at 11 o'clock uh, the next time, then I lose 59 minutes uh, of the time uh, that I could use for uh, working with that machine. So what I thought that uh, I will use this uh, circuit, which monitors uh, the sound level in the room because that machine is quite loud. So I could monitor the sound level. So I set up a trigger value. So when the machine is running, uh, I set a trigger value in the memory of the Arduino. And then if the machine stops, then it becomes much more uh, silent in the room. So therefore that the trigger level is getting triggered because the sound level uh, drops uh, in that room. And uh, I could send a message to the RF uh, device, uh, to another device with the receiver in my room and uh, tell that, hey, you should check your machine. So what I present here is basically a project which uh, is intended to make my work easier and more efficient. So let's uh, demonstrate how this works. So let's connect uh, this circuit to the uh, power. And now uh, all I have uh, uh, as a connection between these two devices is basically the plus five volt. So I uh, connect a mobile charger to this uh, circuit here. And then I just share the five volt between these two guys. So what happens here is that uh, we can change the uh, potentiometer and that will change the level which is uh, printed on this screen so that's basically the bit uh, received by the Arduino from the AD converter and uh, what is happening here that uh, for example I'm down in the room and uh, I have this functioning and operational device then uh, I just uh, simply monitor the sound level and that device is loud, which I'm using downstairs. So uh, I, I continuously monitor that sound level. And uh, if the uh, device is running, then uh, I just press this button here, which runs a function within the Arduino and saves the trigger level as the level of the uh, sound level. So let's say, the trigger level is saved when it is very loud in the room. So then the machine is uh, running, running, and then it all of a sudden stops because the testing is finished or the specimen which I was testing uh, failed. And then uh, it just simply stops. So then of course there is a noticeable drop in the sound level. And then uh, also there will be a noticeable drop uh, on the voltage level of this device, which does not happen, unfortunately. But uh, now I just uh, simulate that with the potentiometer. So now uh, I do the same. So I turn this potentiometer towards the ground. So I will uh, decrease the level because now the status is uh, telling that it is waiting. So let's turn it down. And I turn it down to zero. So here, uh, it says that the level is six or now it's four. And then uh, actually when uh, the trigger is uh, valid or the trigger level is valid, then the transmitter turns on 
and then it sends the message to this screen and I don't know if you can see it I will try to magnify it uh, somewhere here but now it says check device so I transmitted just a simple number and uh, there is a very simple logic in this uh, Arduino that if the number is one then it will print check device and if the number is zero it will print uh, waiting so now uh, let's say this part uh, is in my room and uh, then uh, it tells me that check device so I go down and I check the device and uh, everything is uh, good because then I don't waste uh, that much time uh, waiting for the machine which is already stopped by some uh, circumstances and how I reset this so anytime I change this to, to something else then it will wait again so now I just increase the voltage level and now the status is uh, waiting and then uh, I have to set a new trigger level of course uh, if I start the machine again and here the message uh, changed again to waiting so then I sent another message to this device but just uh, once or twice that uh, change the message on this screen to waiting so then I will know that all right uh, I have to wait uh, because the, the testing is still running so I hope that this uh, demonstration was not so confusing but now I will uh, show you the circuit in a more uh, orderly manner and uh, I will also show you the source code and uh, show you how this works uh, in, in the program level of these Arduinos. So let's go to the computer now. So this is the drawing of the circuit which I was uh, showing you previously and uh, let's start uh, on the left side so that's the transmitter part and you can see the Arduino Nano here, uh, the push button, the OLED screen, uh, the potentiometer which will be replaced by a microphone uh, circuit and then uh, the transmitter circuit. So here uh, everything is very simple. Uh, based on the library that I use, the data connection of this uh, ra radio transmitter is expected to be connected to the 12 uh, D12 uh, pin. And then uh, obviously the VCC goes to the 5 volt and the GND goes to the GND. So I have a common uh, GND and uh, VCC rail down here. And then uh, I put the push button on a attach interrupt uh, capable pin, so D2. And then you can see it's debounced uh, uh, by this uh, resistor here. The potentiometer is connected to the 5 volt and the ground as well and uh, of course the output pin is connected in this case to the A6 so I will use the A6 pin as the analog digital uh, converter pin and uh, since uh, the OLED screen is uh, having these standard uh, SDA and SCL uh, pins because it's an I squared C device then we will be using the A4 as the SDA and uh, A5 as the SCL uh, pins and then VCC and ground goes to their uh, corresponding uh, places so plus 5 volt is the VCC and the GND is GND so this is the transmitter part and then on the right hand side uh, it's more simple because we just have the screen the connections are identical to the previous connection and then uh, of course we have a common 5 volt and uh, ground rail down here and up here we have the receiver the receiver have uh, the receiver has two data pins uh, they can be connected together and uh, according to the library the receiver is expected to be connected to the D11 so the 11 uh, the number 11 here and then uh, of course it has a VCC connection which goes to the 5 volt and it has a ground connection which goes to the ground. So this is the wall circuit and uh, basically really what happens here is you set 
literally you can use any kind of sensor which has a voltage as an output proportional to the thing that you measure so if you have a load cell uh, you can also use this or if you have a light sensor uh, then you can use this circuit as well so all you have to do is just replace this transistor and uh, connect the output of your circuit which uh, produces an output voltage between uh, 0 and 5 volts uh, you uh, you connect that 5 uh, volt uh, 0 to 5 volt output to the a6 if you use the exact same uh, circuit and the exact same uh, source code so yeah but in this case we just emulate our uh, levels by a potentiometer that's the easiest way so this is uh, the circuit is it's very simple and it's very easy to assemble so now let's see the two codes for the transmitter and the receiver so this is the transmitter code and uh, we will be using this RHASK uh, library you just search for it uh, in the library manager and you will find it and then we need uh, the SPI and wire and what I do here, this is a very, very important uh, part that uh, I'm using the ASCII-based OLED driver library because the original library is a graphical-based or graphics-based uh, library and uh, whatever you do, you are not able to uh, do anything else than just running your uh, OLED screen uh, because the other type of library just uh, fills up the memory of the Arduino Nano. So I strongly suggest you to search for these uh, libraries. Uh, actually, it's this library. Uh, search for it and get this because uh, it replaces the ASCII. Uh, it replaces the letters to ASCII characters instead of uh, using them as some sort of graphical objects. So they will use uh, much less memory and you are able to use, uh, for example, sensors or other type of things. Uh, you can define a lot of variables and so on and so on uh, if you use this ASCII-based library. So all we have to do here is just uh, we include these uh, header files and then set the address. And this is a very regular address uh, for this. And then if your device doesn't have a reset pin, in my case, I just have these uh, four pins that I showed you. GND, VCC, clock and data. So then uh, you just set this and we instantiate uh, the object and also uh, first for the OLED and also for the uh, RF uh, driver, so for the uh, transmitter. And then I have some uh, variables. Uh, the sound level uh, should be the variable for the microphone's uh, output. And then I have trigger level, average sound level, and then I have just a variable called message number. So that will be either zero or one uh, based on the uh, status. And uh, I will also use uh, a boolean for this because I want to run the functions with uh, these booleans. You will see it how. And then some pins. So the microphone pin, uh, which is basically the pin for any type of output which uh, generates a voltage between zero to five volts. Uh, proportional to your uh, thing. So for example, your light sensor, your weight sensor or noise level sensor, whatever. Uh, I haven't implemented this, but I, I am planning to uh, in the future. So I just want to put two LED lights. Actually, I can do this while I'm recording this uh, video. So we have two LED lights uh, connected to the digital five and the digital uh, six uh, pins. And uh, basically, for my purpose, uh, this light will go uh, on when uh, it is too loud, so when the level is triggered, and this light will go off. Uh, sorry, this light will go off, and this light will go on when everything is okay. And then uh, the calibrate pin is basically, uh, for me, it's the, uh, we can call it a trigger pin as well. Uh, this is uh, to save uh, the trigger level. That's all. And in the setup, 
we just uh, initialize the display so you just copy paste basically this uh, we also initialize the the driver for the transmitter and then here uh, we can turn on the internal pull-up uh, for the uh, push button but uh, also you can just uh, simply use a resistor as I, I, I did uh, and also now we can uh, just uh, quickly do the same exercise for the LEDs so for example if you want to uh, make it then uh, you have to make uh, this guy uh, as an output and then we just copy paste uh, this and we also make the green LED as an output and as it is uh, now, we can also write these uh, sorry, so digital write and then we say that the red LED is low I'm using the pins as power source and this uh, is high so you just connect a small uh, resistor, for example, one kilo ohm resistor in series with your LED between the ground and uh, these pins. And uh, basically that's all. So when we start the machine, or sorry, uh, we start the device, then the red LED, uh, red LED will be low and the green uh, LED uh, will be high because uh, everything is going uh, in a correct way. So we just keep them as they are. And uh, we define the calibrate pin, so the uh, this is the digital 2, as an attach interrupt pin. And it will run this trigger sound level uh, function when it goes to low from high. The loop is clean. Uh, I just have these two functions. And then here, uh, the print screen is basically, I just fill up the different things. Uh, into the screen and then uh, basically this logic is the most important part in the program so if triggered is false so if it is not triggered then display uh, print line uh, we, uh, we just print it uh, uh, like this so it will print waiting and I say that the message number is zero so basically this uh, sends a zero to the receiver together with this so here we just send uh, this number or if it's triggered so basically we can write this that uh, triggered equals uh, true then we write that it is triggered and we send this uh, number to the receiver and you remember that uh, we defined uh, the LEDs. So here what we can do is very simple. We just keep the LED in this. And here uh, we just switch this to the other. So the red LED as long as everything is fine and the device is waiting should be low and the green should be high so it is on and when it, this status is changing so the triggered goes true as I wrote it here as a comment then the red LED goes high so it turns on and the green LED goes low so it turns off and then how we measure the sound uh, so before uh, we start a new measurement, uh, we just zero out everything. And then uh, what I did here is just I measure it 10 times with 200 milliseconds delay. So we can like smooth out the peaks and uh, the dips in, in the sound level. And then uh, we just create an average sound level. So basically this is two seconds of uh, sound integrated sort of and uh, that is stored in this variable and then we check our 
uh, thing here. So if the average sound level, so the measured sound level is smaller than the trigger level minus 100 and you can uh, customize this as you want, how sensitive uh, your device is and uh, what is your trigger level, so uh, you can uh, customize this. So if it is smaller, so in my case if the noise level in the room drops, uh, let's say significantly, then we set this uh, variable to true and then if this does not happen so it is still noisy in the room then uh, the triggered uh, variable stays false and then uh, this is basically the uh, function for the push button so again everything is zero here because otherwise for example if you trigger once and then you uh, restart the same without uh, physically restarting the device so you just change the trigger level so the device goes back to waiting mode then uh, if you don't make this zero then the sound level here stays uh, as the previous value and then it gets summed up uh, with the uh, previous or no so with the following or uh, newly incoming uh, values so for example if uh, this was 500 before then uh, here when you add the level of your microphone or your sensor to this guy then you don't start from zero but you start from 500 so here uh, we do the same as uh, previously up here uh, we just keep uh, the summing uh, procedure so we sum up uh, the uh, we just uh, sum up uh, the values for two seconds and then we create an average here and then this average uh, trigger level will be uh, compared with the average sound level and then we also make the sound level zero once more because if this guy here starts uh, then we just don't want to uh, cause any kind of uh, trouble if if for some reason this just doesn't work or, or something like that so just uh, keep it at zero and then uh, the send message uh, which is also here and here this is very simple so it just uses the regular uh, functions from the library so we create these message numbers based on the uh, status and we send it and and that's all so then that's that's how we work here so first we create this message number and that will be passed uh, to the function as you can see it here and uh, then we just pack it uh, in, in the in the Arduino and send it via the transmitter so this is the uh, transmitter part it's uh, fairly simple but uh, I upload this code so you will be able to just copy paste it and use it so now we are looking at the receiver uh, I don't want to repeat all these things because they are the same so we just go through the uh, libraries of the transmitter and the libraries uh, for the uh, SPI and wire and so on and here we just set up uh, the buffer length uh, and uh, that's all and the buffer and here I created a string for the data so for example uh, if you want to send a string not just a number or something so some long message then you can build up your uh, message into a string and then uh, here I just put the comment so the receive pin is the D11 I showed you on the circuit but uh, just to remember I keep it in the code again this is just the same and here uh, I also for checking uh, this is not really used now but this was just for some uh, uh, debugging sort of thing you can send a message on the serial just to see if the device is working but uh, here the loop uh, now I made it a bit less clear but uh, we are just looking for the uh, following message so if we receive something with the uh, desired length so the correct uh, packet size then we keep uh, reading our buffer into this uh, string so 
each time this uh, for loop iterates, we just uh, keep uh, increasing uh, our string with the received data. So it's uh, fairly simple. And then uh, we print the screen uh, or print to the uh, OLED screen. That's the same as in the previous case. And then we zero out uh, the received string. So uh, when the new data comes in, it doesn't uh, get mixed with the previous data. So this is the loop and this, this run, runs uh, infinitely. So here uh, the print screen is very simple. So we just set the cursor, clean the screen, so on, so on. And we just wait uh, for, the, for the message here. And whenever uh, the string is zero, we just print waiting. And if the, uh, if the message uh, goes something else, which is case, uh, in this case, it's uh, number one. Uh, so we can make sure that, for example, if we somehow receive some weird data, uh, we don't get this printed. Uh, we can just write uh, this, uh, sorry, number one. So we can do this. And then uh, it's pretty sure that if it's uh, zero, this runs, and if this is one, then this runs. But uh, basically, if we send the number one uh, from the transmitter device, then we just get the check device message. So I will know that uh, my measurement is finished or stopped, the sound level dropped in the room, so I have to go down and check it. So that's why I wrote check device. So basically, this is all. Uh, this is a bit of a mixture of different projects. So for example, using the AD converter in the Arduino, using the OLED screen in the Arduino, or with the Arduino, uh, and using the RF433 uh, circuits to transmit and receive data. So I hope that uh, this was useful, and you learned something, and see you in the next video.